just want to thank God for being here again and in this um, this place. And you know, we've been training really hard. We've been we've been training ever since my last defeat. You know, I've been I've been a um, little depressed. I've been going through a lot of stuff from b before because I knew all the stuff that I had that, that I did not do, you know, so I'm really motivated for May 1st. I know Chris Arriola is training hard. Like he said, um, the first time we, we met, I, I wanted to be like him. And now the, the tables has turned and, you know, he's motivated as well. But like I said, we're, we're ready. I've been training really hard. My mentality is where it needs to be. Um, you know, where we're ready for, for whatever's coming. Andy, I'll start with you as I'm going to talk with, with the fighters and the, and the trainers, and then we'll open it up to the media for questions, uh, various media outlets joining us from around the world. But Andy, is it fair to say, as you look at your trainer, Eddie Reynoso, uh, with Canelo, with Oscar Valdez, the one item that I feel like Eddie brings to whoever he trains is discipline, a certain level and expectation that he expects from his fighters is that fair to say? And how much has that, you know, bettered you as a pious fighter? You know, what it bettered me a lot because he told me if, if he's going to give me the opportunity to train here, I have to be disciplined. I have to be in the right state of mind. I have to give it all I got because they see the potential that I have, but I just got to be in 100%. And I've never seen myself in 100% until now. So, like I said, being with Canelo, being with Ryan, Oscar Valdez, we're all surrounded by, by great champions, great people that are motivated. So we're all on the same track and we help each other at, at points. So being right here with Eddie is just a, is just a blessing because we're, we're learning, we continue to learn, we're learning every single day and you know, we're just working hard. Once we're in this world, we gotta take it serious. We can't take nothing for granted. We have to work as hard and and him telling me those those words, it, it means a lot, you know, but we've been training super hard, man. We've been working on a lot of different things. Um, I have the ability to do a lot of different different moves and stuff, and he's bringing the he's bringing that out of me. So I'm just excited for May 1st to, to show the, the new Andy coming soon. You've had a lot of uh, you've had trainers in the past like Manny Robles and Abel Sanchez. So you, you've been with high caliber trainers. What do you think Eddie does that uh, has really changed your mindset and approach into the fight game right now? Yeah, I had a lot of different trainers and I appreciate every single trainer that I've had because I learned a lot from each and every trainer. And, um, but what Eddie does, he likes to perfect every punch, every movement, every little thing that we do. So we don't just go and throw and bang and all that. We perfect what we're gonna throw. If we're gonna throw the right hand, we perfect that. If we're gonna slip and, and bob and weave, we're gonna counter punch, we're gonna throw punches. So he, he likes to perfect every punch. So that, that's something that I've never had in a different trainer. And lastly, for me, um, a big thing about the last, 16 months in your career has been your weight and how much you ballooned in the Joshua rematch. You weighed 283 that night. What is your target weight for the fight against Ariola? You know what? After my last defeat against Anthony Joshua in Saudi Arabia, I gained to like almost 320 pounds, 310 pounds. So we've been working slowly but surely. We want to be at 255, 250. We don't want to go too crazy. Um, losing weight so right now we're trying to make the fat into muscle and you know just 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 work hard the discipline is there we just need to um you know stay focused and um i'm not looking over past chris Ariola because he's a tough fighter he's a warrior um you know he, he takes a lot of punches and you know he, he's strong but uh you know we, we just gotta stick to the game plan you mentioned how difficult it was for you to go through losing your title and, and how hard that was for you to deal with. Can you speak to what was most difficult about it? What were you most disappointed about in terms of, you know, how you trained for the fight maybe and how the fight went? Well, uh, losing um, from my last fight against Anthony Joshua, it was, it was devastating, you know, because I did not do the things that I was supposed to do. And I look back right now and I'm like, damn, man, if I would have stayed dedicated, if I would have stayed um, disciplined and, and do the right things that I was supposed to do, and that was the most important fight of my life um, on the rematch against Anthony Joshua. But now it's totally different. Now I got my, my mind right. Um, 
you know, uh, I got a great trainer. So we're just, we're just ready for May 1st. And, but like I said, I was, of course, I was really disappointed because I knew the, the ability that I had and to stay champion. Andy, what was it that, that led you to maybe not prepare the right way for the last fight? Well, a lot of people got to understand that I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. And once that moment happened, you know, it, I, I kind of went, I kind of went a little off, off the, off the road. You know, I started doing things that I thought I would never be able to do. I wasn't really focused on, on the price on the bag, you know, so but now, um, like I said, I was really devastated. I do not want to go back. I do not want to do the same mistakes that I did before. And like I said, I'm more motivated than I ever been before. I have God on my side and, and um, Eddie right here. So we're, we're ready for whatever that comes my way. You mentioned to Manuk that you would like to weigh 250, 255 or so for your fight against Chris. How much different of a fighter do you think you'll be at that weight as opposed to how you were when you fought Joshua the second time? You know what? I, I've always been overweight. And now that I've been dropping weight um, normally and, and the right way by eating right, not just wearing the sauna suit, starving yourself, because that's what I used to do back in the day. But now that we have, that we're eating the right things, we're working on the right things and, um, I feel amazing, man. I, I could say this. I feel amazing. I'm more, I, I could do better stuff that I, was, that I couldn't do before because of my big gut. My, I had cheat cheese, I had tits that wouldn't let me throw the, the right punches and all that. But, you know, um, now I, I'm more motivated. I'm more dedicated in this sport and, you know, sky's the limit. Andy, you've talked a lot about, you know, what you went through after the loss to Joshua. How long did that kind of period of depression last and what, what really helped bring you out of it? No, like I've been gone for a year and, and some months, you know, and of course it's going to feel def devastating because I didn't do the things that I was supposed to do. So of course I still keep that grudge inside my heart because I, I don't want to, I don't want to go back and do the same error that I did before. So now that I'm with the right team, my mentality is, is, is on the right track. So I don't want to keep that, that focus. Um, you know, I just want to stay disciplined for not just for this fight, but for all the fights that I have in the future. Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? So question for both Chris and, and, uh, and, um, um, uh, and Andy. I wanted to know, when you guys sparred, what do you guys remember from that session? Well, just that we're, we're both warriors, man. We don't like to give up. Um, we take punches. We receive them, and we give them back, you know. Um, and I have nothing but love um, with Chris Arreola, you know. We're friends outside of the ring, but inside the ring, you know, it's business. And, you know, outside of the – like, to this day, I'll, I'll give him a hug and be like, bro, we're about to fight, and, you know, that we're going to – you know, we got to secure the bag. That, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um... One thing that I remember like about Andy is that he was very unassuming. I, I didn't think that he was going to have the hand speed that he had. I didn't think that he was going to have the skills that he had. And once we got in the ring, holy fuck, was, did I have a rude awakening? You know, this, this kid that came from Mexicali put hands on me. You know, he was putting hands on me and I was putting hands on him back. And even though he was 17 years old, I remember that uh, we're, going, we're banging, we're banging hard. And instead of quitting, nah, he kept coming. And uh, it, was, it was a fun sparring session. I remember that very much. And I had nothing but respect for him then, and I have nothing but respect for him now. And uh, I was one of those guys that predict that he was going to beat Joshua the first time. All right, excellent. Thanks very much, Ellie. Our next question is going to come from Ernesto Amador. Ernesto, please unmute yourself, and you can ask your question. Thank you. Uh, let me start with Chris, please. Uh, Chris, if you can answer in, in English and Spanish, please. You, you shook the world with your last performance, and it was great to, to, to watch your fight because you threw a lot of punches. And, and I agree with you. At least you deserve a, a draw. Uh, what is the meaning for you to, to have this uh, emotional fight? I mean, uh, and how is the feeling now that you're going to fight against the one Mexicans who conquer the thing that you dream all your career? You know what, in, in all honesty, I, I've 
I knew that me and Andy one day we were going to fight since the first day we sparred. And this is just basically, it was, it was meant to be. This fight between me and Andy was meant to be, eventually. Everybody, thanks so much for taking time to, uh, to talk to us. You know, Andy, first question. You know, when you first linked up with Edith Reynoso and you guys sat down and tried to see what can you guys work on? Did you, was, it the, was it to try and become, you know, the same Andy Ruiz that beat Anthony Joshua at a Madison Square Garden and sort of build upon that? Or was it to sort of become a, a new version, a new Andy Ruiz, a, a different fighter that we kind of have seen previously? You know what? When we first met up, it was like, all right, what do you want? Do, like, what, what, are, what are we going to do? Are you going to be the same fighter like you were before or are you going to take it to the next level like I'm doing with the other fighters? So I was like, you know what, Eddie? I want to do whatever it takes for me to become a, a two-time heavyweight champion of the world. And you know what? And that, that's when I made my decision. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give all, my, all the discipline that I have, uh, every sacrifice that I have to do to to approve myself and, you know, prove um, to all my fans because I feel like I let a lot of people down. And like I said, I'm, I'm more motivated than ever. And having Eddie right here on my side, working together, changing all the stuff that, that I didn't do on my last fight or ever, um, it, it just feels good. <laughs>